Hi guys, it's Jenny and today we're going to go through a shoulder prehab, rehab or just shoulder health session wherever you're at. This is great if you've had a subluxation, maybe recovering from a dislocation or just getting some nips and tightness in your shoulders. You are going to need a light resistance band like a TheraBand or something like this and a light weight. I have a small 5kg dumbbell but this could be whatever you have, a bottle of water or even tins of beans. So let's get started. We're just going to start moving the shoulders. So forward and back because of the arms, just to get some movement. And then round and round. So keeping it loose. We're not like pushing for a particular range of motion today. We're just talking about movement. And switch direction forwards. I actually sublux this shoulder last week or around a week ago so you're gonna see this is exactly what I would do for recovery so big arm swings but note it has already been a week and you can see how much range of motion that I have with my arm already if you are still like getting a lot of pinching or very sharp pains you might not be ready for this yet or just go to the range of motion say it's something more like this just stick with that and eventually you'll get more and more and more. Then we're going to go over and under, give ourselves a little hug. One arm on top, same arm underneath. You may find that some ranges of motion are absolutely fine and some are painful. So for me at the minute, most stuff is getting to be okay again. But say it's too far this way and I get a pain too far this way, I get a pain. So I'm aware of that and I'll just be careful in those ranges and you do the same. So we've done that. We're just going to do, um, if you've ever heard of a move called teacups, it's basically shoulder rotation. We're going to imagine we're holding a teacup on our hand and we're going to bring our elbow round, hand round the head and back down. Same again, elbow up, hand round the head, back down. If you're just sort of like flailing your arm, <laughs> that's fine too. They're not being strict. Like I said today, we're just trying to get different ranges of motion. So here we're in external rotation, then we internally rotate the shoulder as we rotate it. So that's that's the only goal. And <laughs> don't worry if you're not quite understanding the arm movement. Swap sides, elbow up, hand round, out, elbow up, hand round, down. So the in the official teacups, the goal would be to not spill the tea out of your hand not to drop the teacup and you sort of can move your body to help facilitate that but like I say as long as you're getting rotation of the shoulder I don't really care how it looks like now we're going to go the other way so back to the first hand this time the hand goes out shoulder externally rotates around the back of the head and round it's actually interesting for me because even though my right shoulder is the one with the injury traditionally it's been the stronger, more stable and more intelligent shoulder. So this is very easy on my right hand, even though I can feel some pinching. As soon as you switch to my left, I'm doing it, but it, I don't know, it doesn't feel as smooth. And you might have that same thing. See my right hand down here, like trying to help out. Don't drop the tea. You got this. Okay, so before we get stuck in, that should be nice and warm with the shoulders, but before we get stuck into the weighted stuff, we're going to do a bit of a bicep stretch. So if you've got a wall, that's perfect. You can do this while stood with your own hands, but we can get better angles with the wall. So palm flat if you can. If not, just go on the fingertips, but work towards palm flat and start to turn away. So what would happen if you've got a shoulder injury you stay in the stretch, I'm going to start talking, is that everything comes up to try and protect it and in. So your shoulder protracts forwards, your trap tightens, your bicep tightens, all to try and help, and your pecs tighten, just to try and help protect the shoulder, even though it's actually counterproductive. So we want to make sure that the chest is open, the bicep is open, and deflate, deflate? Depress your shoulder so it goes down. So we're activating the lat and trying to relax the trap. To help us with that, you can tip your head away. Maybe do a couple of no's, so you're looking up and down from one shoulder to the other. And a couple of yeses, looking up to the ceiling, looking down at your chest, 
This might be very uncomfortable in your hand. So just relax off. Like if, or prefer you held a stretch for longer with the fingertips on the wall, then push, 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 push. Oh, and then you come out of it completely. So just keep holding whatever level is doable for you. Okay, good. Let's switch sides. So my left hand is now on the wall. And then I'm going to do a couple of yeses, a couple of noes. Again, making sure that my shoulder is down away from my ear. My bicep is open. The more you rotate as well, the more your chest will open, which again is all of the things we want to counteract that natural defensive protection that your body has for your shoulder, which is good because it stops you from using it. But ultimately we want to start using our shoulder again. Okay, so now let's get stuck in. We're gonna grab our um, band first of all, and we're gonna get stuck into some rotations again, but this time using a band. So get enough tension on that you can pull it, but again, be aware of wherever you're at in your pain journey. Lift it up, back and over. This could be too much. So, well, first thing to do would just be to go wider on the band. So you've got less tension. Rotate round to the back and then round to the front. Second thing to do, if you've got a band like mine, is to just take it so you're only holding like the edges, the very edges. So you're not dealing with double the band, you're just dealing with almost a single tension. Or if this is still too much for your shoulder at the minute, we'll go back, drop the band and just go back to movements of your arm, okay? So that was what, about four? <laughs> you may have done five or six by now. I keep talking away. But if we do a few extra of these, then that's okay. Oh no, our shoulders are too strong. I didn't want that. Well, we'll say eight. Nine. And 10, we're doing two rounds, so I promise next time I'll count a bit better. Then we're gonna to go to retraction, so for our dislocate, so you're gonna hold one hand out in front. Again, if you're using this double loop band, just one of those, not both. Then we're gonna pull back, pause at the end, come back in. Two, three. You want to really focus on your back muscles again. Your traps might try and get involved. Your shoulder is gonna burn a little bit, but you want the movement to be coming from your back muscles and your lats, you know, your lats should be on. Your biceps are gonna be involved. But again, as little as possible, it's more about the back. Nine. 10. Good, switch sides so the other hand stays in front, other hand is gonna pull back. One. You might find that if you do have an injured shoulder that it's weaker, just that it burns out a lot quicker. That's fairly normal at this time if it's had a trauma or if you're recovering from a trauma. It, just shake it off and keep going. Like we're, we're working on endurance here because it may get to the point where you can do one or two of these but we want to get to the point where this is not a big deal for either shoulder, but especially for your injured shoulder. So if it's getting fatigued after three or four reps, you can relax there. That's obviously something we want to build on. Okay, both hands at the same time now. This is a big one where the traps really try and get involved. So drop the shoulders down and even pull the band down to your sternum rather than your chest. Sometimes it helps me Get more of the lat and less of the traps. Five, six, seven. Palms are facing up, by the way, to encourage external rotation. Nine and ten. Good. Relax for a second. I am um, feeling in my biceps which like I said, is not a bad thing, but it's something I'm gonna try and be aware of for the next session, of oh, the next session, for the next set. We're doing this again, guys. And I'm gonna try and really focus on squeezing my lats, squeezing my back. Like I said, it's interesting that I have an injury at this point, um, so you are seeing how I deal with this recovery session in real time. 
Back to the dislocates, nice and wide, reaching up, reaching down. You may notice in yourself and in me, if you do have an injured shoulder, that as you go around, one of them may be slightly like reluctant to go over. Maybe you are sort of like compensating by di leaning diagonal. When you're doing this sort of work, it's really, really good to do it in front of a mirror because you might be thinking your shoulder is recovering okay, but there could be compensations, there could be strange movement patterns that have built up or that are building up and you want to get on top of them before they become a problem. You can't always feel them, which is really annoying. You think you're doing it perfectly and suddenly you watch yourself back and you're like, oh my God, one of my arms is way off to the shop somewhere. I actually forgot to count again, so sorry. <laughs> one more, should we do one more? Excellent. Just trying to avoid the rotations, the retractions really. But back to them we are. So I'm going to give myself a little less band this time, so that means I'm going to put this hand further away so there's less tension. If it's here, there's a lot of tension. If it's here, there's less. I'm going to drop my shoulders down and really focus on my back. I'm going to loosen my grip as well. Gripping hard can sometimes get the biceps. One. Two, that's better for me. Three, hope you're finding it better too. Four, more back, rhomboids, lats. Six, seven, eight. Oh, gotta be careful of that as well. Your torso might rotate to try and help. Keep that facing forward. Nine, 10, good. Shake it off if you need to, other side. One, using the back. Two, pause at the end just for a second. We're not bouncing in and out. Three, four, and go as far as you can. That might not be very far. It might not be as far as usual. Sorry, right shoulder is not strong for me at the moment. Six, seven, but yeah, you will get better the more you do this. Nine, ten, good. Just for a sec, shaking them off. Again, this one, I'm really trying to focus on my back and my lats, less of my biceps and traps. So, shoulders down, I'm pulling back. One, two, I'm gonna count now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew, good. Put the band down. Throw that away, don't need that anymore. But I'm just gonna give you a little rest. Rotate the shoulders backwards, forwards. Just make sure they're feeling okay. Again, depending on where you're at with your recovery, that could have been fine, that could have been bony, or that could have been near impossible. So just wherever you're at, that's okay. We're learning as we go about how our shoulder's feeling and about where we're at. Each time you do this, it should get easier. Or at least that's what people keep telling me anyway. So now we're going to need your lightweight. So I've got my five kilo dumbbell. Um, this might be too much and you might not gauge it perfectly at the start as well. It really depends on if you've done this before, recent an injury is, blah, blah, blah. You can adjust as we go. We're going to do dumbbell shoulder rotations and we're going to do a lot of them. So we're going to start and we're going to turn our arm out, palm facing away from you. Turn it so your palm is facing behind you. Lift it up in front of your face and go behind your head and then return to the start position with a reverse bicep curl. And we repeat it. So for me, this is a big deal doing five kilos. I was trying this last week and uh, four kilos, no, sorry, three kilos was too much. I tried it with those little tiny dumbbells that you see in the gyms and it was just way too much it's this part here going in front of my head it was just so weak um so five kilos is a big win for me so don't be embarrassed to go light on this one because you see the speed we're going now this is the absolute maximum speed you want to go i mean you can't even go slower what we want is control through the full range of motion and your, your shoulder may want to try and skip something that's uncomfortable 
And that's exactly the part where you should be spending the most time. I think that was 10. Switch sides. Same again, palm out, palm back, dumbbell in front of your face. The back angle might be easier to see this from, so I may switch to that for this first rep. We'll see. The difference in my left shoulder compared to my right is crazy. This doesn't feel like anything at all, but my right shoulder was getting to the end of its tolerance by the end of the 10 reps. So again, you may find something like that. <laughs> if you've not got any injury, but you're just doing this for your shoulder health, good job, I like it. You are most welcome here. But you might find that they're both very equal and that's, that's basically where you want to be, whether they're both finding it very easy or they're both knackered. <laughs> Either way, if they're equal, that's like very, very good starting point. But if they're not, just by repeating this, they will get better and better. Now we're going to go to the second variation. So it's very, very similar, but instead we start with our hand or we start with our palm facing behind us. Then we're going to pick up the phone so that our knuckles face our ear. <laughs> pick up the phone, pick up the dumbbell. Feels like picking up the phone. Then go behind your head and then in front. And then we kind of do this reverse hammer curl thing and then rotate it in. Knuckles to the ear, round the back of the head, and down. That's two. We are going for endurance here, if you hadn't noticed already. I think I mentioned it earlier. So if <laughs> the weight is so heavy that you're getting to five, and then you're either having to just sit and watch me do the next five, or you're swinging the dumbbell around your head, not only is that a bit unsafe, the swinging, because you don't know if you're going to hit your head or hurt your shoulder. Um, but it's also kind of pointless for what we're trying to build here. These are not one rep max movements. I mean, you could, but I, <laughs> there's not all that much point. This is stability work, which means it needs to be fairly high rep. And we need to push to the point of fatigue. I wouldn't recommend doing this session as a warm up. This is more a cool down or doing it on your off day. But make sure the weight is light enough that you can do all of these reps with me. If that means you need to pause this video, go get something lighter, you are recommended to do so. <laughs> okay, so it's size. Because we're going to do another round after this. So we're doing about 40 reps per arm. Again, we're going round the back of the head for this one. Palm is backwards, knuckles to ear, round the back of the head. You want to make it nice and smooth, smooth as you can. And because it is light, or I hope it is light, even though you're feeling the burn, we're not getting to the point of failure, but we shouldn't be. So if you are, again, drop the weight down. I don't really care how light you're going or how silly you might feel. You may even end up doing this unweighted, especially like say, if you're recovering from an injury, unweighted and just getting this movement without any weight in your hand will be really, really beneficial for you. That's seven. Oh no. Oh well. Again, the only problem would be that our shoulders are too strong, eh? I can live with that. One more. Ten. The good thing is, I know we're moving continuously, but my right shoulder feels fine now. We're going, we have a rest while we do the other side. So we're going to now go back to that first variation where we come around the front of the head. We're going for endurance, come on. Around the front, around the back, with control. I used a bit of momentum there. Two. This is great because you see these exercises. This is not the first time that we have told you to do dumbbell shoulder rotations for your shoulders. But do you ever do them? <laughs> do you ever do sets of 10? Do you ever do more than one set of 10? I know that I sometimes struggle. They're very boring. So hopefully, you doing them here with me today, even though it's long, means that you're actually going to do them. Well, if you've got this far into the video to hear this little pep talk, <laughs> I can tell that you're already doing them. Because it is boring. 
but it is beneficial. Oh, I forgot to count again, guys. Is that nine? One more. Ten. I should just stop talking. That's my problem. Keep talking. And then I'll use count. <laughs> so again, we're going round, internally rotate, round the front of the head, round the back. So you could, if you wanted, try and break down all the different angles and movement directions that your shoulder goes through here, but <laughs> just think of them as roundy roundies. They're hitting everything, really. We've got internal rotation, external rotation, flexion, ex well, not much extension, maybe a little bit. Abduction, adduction. We're getting all of the little stabilizer muscles that are often really, really like heavily relied upon, but not often are they worked on. They're just expected to keep up with our biceps, triceps, delts, pecs, traps, lats. What about your supraspinatus, huh? <laughs> When's subscapularis day? That's what I wanna know. Look after your rotator cuff, I guess, is what I'm saying. Okay, first hand again. Palm back, knuckles to your ear, around the back of the head. This is the last one, I promise. So again, if you have to drop the weight at this point, drop the weight, that's okay. My shoulder is actually feeling better. I'm feeling it like I do have a little sensation right at the front, which is where I would usually feel the pain <clears throat> with the particular injury I've had. But because I've had some time, I spent some days resting it, Spent some days just moving it, and then recently I've been adding weight to it. It's definitely getting stronger and recovering in the right way. So that's a fairly good point. Just because you think you should be recovering after a certain amount of days, maybe after a certain amount of weeks, you might not be because... Your body tends to heal at whatever rate it heals, and you can do things to help it. But if you're stood here following me along, maybe going, trying to help your own shoulder through the rep, you're not ready for this. So stick to the unweighted version, okay? Just rotating your hand around your head. Other side, up, around the back. You've got to listen to your own body, and I can't tell you how long it'll take to recover, everybody's different. I can only tell you, I guess my best techniques, which is everything in this video, but in terms of listening to your body, in terms of knowing when you've pushed too much, that's something that you're gonna have to learn yourself. We can advise you and a coach can advise you based on their own experience, but you're with you all the time, so. You're the one that's going to know you best. This is also the kind of exercise in which you feel the benefits the next day. So we're going to feel the benefits from this tomorrow. For the rest of the day, your shoulder might feel tired. It might feel sore. It might feel achy. As long as it's not sharp pains, that's okay. I wouldn't recommend doing anything else today, especially not for your shoulders. You can do legs, of course. I wouldn't do any more shoulder stuff today. All of your stabilizing muscles will be fatigued, but tomorrow you're gonna feel great. I think we did a few too many on that side, but you know what? Who cares? Okay, that is the dumbbell finished. It's the resistance band finished. We are finished, well done. We're just gonna do some rotations, check that everything is still <laughs> moving. We've not caused too much tightness, because again, same like the other thing, same like the resistance bands, The traps can sometimes try and help, even though they shouldn't. It's harder with that rotation exercise for the traps to kick in too much because there are so many different directions. But it still can happen. So let's just give ourselves a few moments to rotate everything, move everything. You can do a few neck movements as well. Just moving ear to shoulder. Checking the traps, rotate around one way and the other way, up and down. 
Like I, I feel tight, okay, here. Like I can feel my trap is trying to tighten, trying to protect that shoulder. It's n not what it needs anymore. My body maybe helped me at the start, but now it's not what it needs. So for the rest of the day, it's gonna be my focus, my challenge to keep that shoulder in a good position. Because everything we did today is great, but if then we just let it tighten up and let it, I'm just sitting trying to protect it for the rest of the day, it kind of undoes some of the good stuff we did. So a bit of awareness, make sure your posture is nice and you're not strict, but just comfortable, okay? And I hope you enjoyed following along with me. I'm glad that you stuck with it and you will get the benefits soon. So see you next time.